We need to take our shiny new bolts and instantly age them. Here we go. Hi, I'm Danner. I'm a computer engineering student from Huntsville, Alabama. When I was a kid, my family built this shed in the hills of southern Tennessee. It sat dormant for nearly 20 years and began to deteriorate. I'm currently on a mission to restore the shed and convert it into an amazing tiny house. With the help of my dad, I'm learning the basics of construction, restoring the land, and documenting our story. This is Abandoned Shed to Tiny House. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you saw the last video, we opened up the additions and it just feels really big now, looks really awesome inside. And we're actually gonna go inside in a second because it's really cold outside today and it's also raining. But real quick, I just wanted to show you, um, yesterday we were in the barn and we were, we were looking around at some old wood that's just stacked up in there. And we were actually really excited for that wood because they said that we could take it and use it for the project. But unfortunately, we discovered that the termites had gotten to it. So um, a lot of that wood is no good. We did save a few pieces, but while we were at the barn, we also grabbed some hay. This one area has been pretty muddy. It has been starting to grow a little bit since we've been throwing out some seed, but hopefully throwing down that hay will give it a little bit of a head start. Throughout this project, we've also been clearing out a bunch of trees right behind the shed, just because there's a lot of brush that grew up that didn't used to be there. and. The other day I was clearing out this last little bit and we discovered something with this huge cherry tree that is right by the tractors, right by the shed. Um, it actually has this big hole in it and it, it does not look very good. So come check this out. So yeah, this tree is huge and if it were to fall in the direction of the shed, it would definitely hit the shed or the tractors. We also have a tin over there that it could hit. So it definitely doesn't look that great and so we definitely want to get this taken care of soon because we don't want all of our hard work to be destroyed by a tree. Part of the good news of this is this is actually a cherry tree and from what I've heard that is some very nice lumber and we could be uh, using that for part of the project. Um, Dad mentioned possibly getting a sawmill and I think that'd be cool if we could uh, actually use this tree for something and also throughout the property um, we're on 22 acres and we have a lot of valuable hardwood trees uh, we have black walnut oak cherry all kinds of really good trees and um, if we had some kind of sawmill we could be using that for part of this project and also some future projects so we're definitely thinking about doing that but um, i think in one of the upcoming episodes we're probably going to be getting one of our neighbors shannon to come and help us cut down this tree so I'll probably end up doing an episode on taking down this tree because I've never seen a tree like this get taken down by a pro so I think that'd be pretty cool and I'm sure a lot of you would want to see that too so that's the tree and let's go ahead and go inside because it's pretty cold out here all right so now that we're inside by the heater I can talk a little bit about what we're doing today um, last time I mentioned that we we're gonna be doing this big beam up top Basically, we are sandwiching three 2x10s together right here where this one is, and it's just going to be this long beam, and we're going to glue them together, nail them together. It's going to look cool, and it, it will also carry the load when we remove these studs, and then we'll be able to have that big opening that we're talking about. Last time, we gave a little bit of a tour, mentioned some of the layout, and also one of the things we didn't talk about, which is all this stuff that we have going on in the background and it's even grown a little bit since last episode. So uh, I'll just start with this oven. Uh, this is actually an oven that is going to be used for a future project. I'm not going to talk about that project just yet, but you guys can expect that sometime on this channel. But this is just a propane stove, it's a Magic Chef oven. And our timer actually just went off because we're cooking some potatoes inside. So we're eating potatoes for the day, but uh, Dad also loves to cook and we've been cooking some stuff on here. One day we even went out got some oyster mushrooms from the land. They were just growing there and um, cooked those, ate them. It was really cool just getting to eat mushrooms that were just wild. Um, also, this tub, I found this on the side of the road. Sounds kind of sketchy, but it was definitely in a pile of trash and I thought this would be a perfect sink for our shop. But right now, we got all this stuff going on. This is actually a, a portable camping water heater and it has a pump where you can just pump water straight out of one of these containers and it heats it up. And so now, 
I don't want to run it for too long, but we have warm water. And so if we're cooking, we can fill up some stuff with our water. We can also come wash our hands. And yeah, it's just really good to have all this. So I'll actually probably put a link for these in the description if you guys want to go look up a little bit more about them. But one of the things that I thought was cool is uh, this pump is actually, you just give it 12 volts and our creative solution for supplying this thing with 12 volts was actually this adapter that we got for a DeWalt battery. We just decided to pick one brand of a tool so we have all these consistent batteries and so now we have tons of these DeWalt batteries and this is an adapter that you can uh, plug in USB and it has 12 volt out so you can use it to charge your phone or you can just power things like this. So. This whole thing is running off a DeWalt battery, which is really cool because we have tons of those sitting around. So yeah, I'll also put a link down in the description if you guys want to go check these out. But this is really just temporary for right now because we are doing the whole solar off-grid thing. And one of the next big things is going to be running electrical down. So um, we'll be able to actually power this off uh, solar pretty soon. But, but yeah, this was just a great temporary solution. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. We have an oven, we can cook, we can wash our hands, and we also have a small mini fridge. We haven't really tested that yet just because it's been pretty cold in here, but um, we wanted to test how that's going to be with power on our solar system and just see like, how long it takes to cool down and stuff like that, just in case we want to refrigerate some stuff here eventually. Yeah, that's, that's our little setup in the corner. Also, let's go check on Sage. <laughs> So this is Sage. Um, she was kind of cold, so I gave her my jacket, and she's just been sitting here. Sage, what do you say? Say, say, hit the like button and subscribe. She says, "Let me sleep." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she she's been really great. She just uh, sleeps while we do our work. She also is really crazy when we play with her. But um, I think we're gonna go ahead and get to work um, on this beam. These are the first 2x10s we're going to be putting up. This is going to be the middle layer and instead of just putting them up we do want to do a little bit of prep work because we want them to be super flat so that there's as small as a gap as possible. Probably going to be impossible for us to avoid having a gap but we, we just want to get it as close as possible and so the thing we're going to be trying is running it through our planer. For those of you who don't know what a planer is, basically it just removes a very thin layer of wood and makes the wood flat and parallel. So I'm gonna run a demo piece through, just a uh, old two by four, just so you guys can kind of see what it does. And then we're gonna be running these whole beams through. All right, so you can see how uh, dirty this piece of wood is. And let's just go ahead and put on some safety glasses and run it through. That first pass just removed a little bit, and so on these next couple passes, it's probably going to get all that completely off, so we'll do that again. So this is what it looked like when we started and this is what it looks like after we remove that thin layer and that's exactly what we're going to be doing on these pieces of wood and it should just make it nice and flat so that we put it up there it just lines up. So let's go ahead and do it with these big pieces.
Okay, so we are doing a little mock-up, resting it on some uh, little two by four pieces. And it looks like it's pretty straight. I mean, obviously it's the middle piece and we're gonna take some of this material and the, and the header behind it off when we cut the top plate out. We can kind of work on that little crown that the wood has in it. it it's more trouble than it's worth to try to do it all on the ground. Unless we had all three boards and we could do them all the same, we're gonna have to do it anyway. And one of the ideas we have is that we're gonna we may use a hewing axe and do a rough look and make it look like a rough bean, but that's... I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, if we can pull it off. Let us know what you guys think about that. <laughs> if it ends up being really obvious, then we'll just make it an intentional rough look. All right, so we just wrapped up getting our first layer of the beam put on. Um, we went ahead and nailed through everything and we're really happy with how this one turned out because this seam where they came together just ended up fitting together perfect. Um, that's exactly how we want it and we're really hoping when we put the next layer on that we can get it just like that because that's the, so the layer that you're really gonna see. So if it's like that, I think we'll be good. And also on the next layer, we're gonna be careful with where we screw our nails because they're going to be temporary and we're going to be putting lag bolts through the entire beam and that's really what's going to hold this thing get together. So um, we're going to go ahead and start prepping the next layer, put that up and we should be good. Doing a little sanding um, to make sure it's nice and flat before we put on the next piece. And also it's kind of like a little trial run and seeing how it's going to be like when we're sanding this on the next one. It actually feels pretty good, but um, we're hoping to hide the seam as much as possible. It'll probably be pretty obvious, but um, the other thing we did was went ahead and marked out where we're going to be putting our lag bolts. Um, we're going to be doing them every four feet. and. We kind of experimented with how three looks, how two looks, and we think we're gonna go with three like this. So when we put up the next one, we're gonna be gluing it like we did with the first layer, but we're also gonna be screwing just temporarily just to hold it in and uh, pack it together. And then we'll come back with the lag bolts. We have to get those and uh, put them in. So that's what we're gonna do next. So another thing we noticed on these floor joists was they're actually only secured in through the floor and uh, nailed in through that T111. So 
when we took off the T111, we went ahead and shot nails in through this header and into the joist just to make sure it's secured in place. And we might actually come back with some hangers or do some lag bolts down through the ceiling just to make sure it's uh, really in place. But um, we're thinking about having some exposed ceilings uh, in the living room. And so we would prefer not to have like some hangers there, but if we have to just for structure, then we will. But you can actually see like some of these aren't even touching this top plate. It's really just secured already through the ceiling. So, so yeah, we aren't too worried about it, but yeah, uh, if we have to, we'll secure them even more, but I don't think they're going anywhere. All right, so we just got those on, got them all glued up, put some screws in, and we're gonna let that cure overnight before we start removing any of this stuff. But we are very excited with how this turned out. Actually, before we even screwed it on, we were just like roughing it in. Um, there was, it was, this board was sticking out a little bit and just taking it down, putting it back up, I think it was stuck on something and it ended up being perfect. It looks so good and I think we can work with it. So let's come back tomorrow and go ahead and start taking this stuff out and we'll get to see a big reveal of how it looks so far. Hey, check this out. It's actually snowing here, which we don't really get snow that often in Tennessee, maybe like two, three times a year. But um, yeah, this is, kind of cool that it's snowing. Yeah, a lot of times when it snows here, um, it's not cold enough to stick, so it's all wet right now. It kind of looks gross, but hopefully later it'll stick some, and maybe when we come back tomorrow, there'll be some snow up on the shed, but this is fun. All right, so it's the next day now. We went ahead and let all this dry overnight. And on the way here today, we picked up some 3 8 inch lag bolts. And we're gonna be replacing all these screws with these lag bolts. We mentioned that we were gonna be doing a kind of rustic look in here. And we do have a cool trick for making these shiny bolts look more rustic. So we're gonna head over to the workbench and show you what we're gonna do. All right, so now that we're over here at our science lab, we need to take our shiny new bolts and instantly age them. So let's go ahead and do just that. Here we go. What? That is so cool. So yeah, that's some really cool stuff. It's called Super Blue, and I think the really cool thing about it is it's clear with this blue coloring in it. And when you put that bolt in there, there's a chemical reaction and it forms a black oxidation layer on there. So if you guys want to do any rustic stuff, this is some really cool stuff. And I'll also put a link in that. I'll put a link for that in the description if you guys want to check that out. We're going to go ahead and finish off bluing the rest of our bolts and washers and go ahead and get them installed in our beam.
This is weird. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Wow. Revealed for the first time in 20 years. Guys, go you. You guys enjoyed the uh, satisfying vacuum cleaning up last time, so there's a little more satisfaction for you. <laughs> knocked out now and it just feels really different this is another one of those things where that just changes the feel of the space feels really good now and also our beam looks really cool um, those these lag bolts look really cool happy with that we were originally thinking of uh, just leaving this beam how it is and sanding it and try, kind of trying to make it look like one big beam but looking at it now there's some big gaps underneath and so um, we still might try that, but um, another option is to just get some walnut or some cool wood and trim it out on the bottom, and that, I think that would look good too. But overall, it just looks really cool, and the next big thing we have to move on to is finishing off that front wall, you know, reuse that pressure treated plate, put some windows there, that'll be cool, and that'll be in a future episode. Also, probably going to do a video on taking down that tree s soon too. Really after that, we'll be able to start wrapping it with Tyvek after we've replaced that front wall wood. But um, I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. But before I go, I just wanted to get your opinion on possibly doing some merch. I think it'd be really cool to have some t-shirts. Uh, one just for us to wear in the videos, cool work shirt, and also for you guys to have. So. I wanted to get your opinion. Let me know what kind of designs you would want to see on some t-shirts, maybe some mugs or something. And um, yeah, then I'll get to work on making those. But I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. So I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.